When you think of cows, you probably imagine gentle farm animals grazing in a field, mooing softly, or chewing cud in the sunshine. They're such a familiar sight that it feels like cows have always been part of human life. But here's an interesting question. Why don't we ever hear about wild cows? We know about wild horses, wild boars, wild buffalo, and even wild cats, but not wild cows. Were cows always tame, or did they come from something else? Today, let's dig into the fascinating history of cows and uncover why there are no truly wild cows roaming the earth anymore. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with what a cow actually is. The domestic cow, scientifically known as Bos taurus, is one of the most important animals humans have ever domesticated. They give us milk, meat, leather, and have even been used historically as draft animals to plow fields. But the key word here is domesticated. Modern cows are the product of thousands of years of human breeding. They've been shaped, quite literally, by our needs, whether it was for larger bodies to produce more meat or for females to produce more milk. That means the cows we see today aren't exactly natural, they're living artifacts of human history. So, if modern cows are domestic, where did they come from? Cows actually do have a wild ancestor, the aurochs, Bos primigenius. Aurochs were massive, powerful wild cattle that roamed across Europe, Asia, and North Africa. They were much bigger than today's cows, some bulls stood over six feet tall at the shoulder, with huge, curved horns and a fierce temperament. To early humans, the aurochs was both a threat and an opportunity. Hunting them was dangerous, but rewarding, providing a lot of meat, hides, and bone for tools. Over time, though, humans realized they could do more than hunt aurochs. They could domesticate them. Domestication of cattle happened about 10,000 years ago in two main places, the Fertile Crescent, modern-day Middle East, and the Indus Valley, modern-day Pakistan and India. In both regions, humans started capturing and selectively breeding aurochs for traits that made them easier to manage. Instead of aggressive, massive bulls, they chose calmer ones. Instead of cows that produced only enough milk for their calves, they began favoring females that produced more. Over generations, these traits became more common. Eventually, the animals changed so much that they weren't aurochs anymore. They were the first domestic cattle. This process is why cows no longer exist as wild animals in the same way. We bred the wildness out of them. Now you might be wondering, if cows came from aurochs, why don't we still see aurochs in the wild? Sadly, aurochs went extinct in 1627. The last known one lived in Poland. There are a few reasons for their disappearance. First, humans hunted them heavily. Remember, these were enormous animals that could provide a huge supply of meat and resources, so they were prime targets. Second, Habitat loss played a role. As humans expanded farmland and cities, the wild landscape's aurochs depended on shrank. And finally, diseases spread from domestic cattle also weakened wild aurochs populations. With all these pressures combined, the aurochs eventually died out. That extinction is the main reason we don't have wild cows today. Their ancestor is gone, and the cows we have now aren't suited for surviving in the wild. Here's a fun thought experiment. What if we released modern cows into the wild? Would they be able to fend for themselves? The answer is complicated. Domestic cows have lost many of the survival traits their ancestors had. They're slower, less aggressive, and more dependent on humans for care. Many breeds are bred for such specific purposes, like dairy cows producing huge amounts of milk that their bodies wouldn't even function well without human help. That said, some populations of feral cattle do exist. 
For example, in parts of Australia, Hawaii, and even the U.S., escaped cattle have formed free-roaming herds. These aren't truly wild, though. They're domestic cows that adapted to living without humans. They're still genetically domestic, but they've developed toughness from living outside farms. So technically, you can find cows roaming freely. But they're feral, not wild in the original sense. They're not aurochs. Even though aurochs are gone, cows do still have wild cousins. For example, the gore of South and Southeast Asia is a massive wild bovine, sometimes called the Indian bison. It's actually the largest living wild cattle species with bulls weighing over a ton. There's also the Banteng, found in Southeast Asia, and the Yak, which lives in the high altitude regions of Tibet and Central Asia. These animals are still wild, though some have also been domesticated. So while there are no wild cows specifically, the larger bovine family still has members that roam freely in nature. Now you might be asking, why does this matter? Why should we care whether cows have wild ancestors or not? It actually tells us a lot about human history. The domestication of cattle was one of the biggest milestones in civilization. Having a steady supply of meat, milk, and draft animals changed everything. It allowed humans to settle down, build permanent communities, and develop agriculture on a large scale. In other words, without domestic cattle, human society as we know it might not exist. And understanding why wild cows don't exist anymore shows us just how powerful human influence on nature has been. We didn't just tame cows, we completely reshaped their species and drove their ancestor to extinction. So here we are, in a world without wild cows. But in a way, cows have never been more successful. There are roughly 1.5 billion cattle on Earth today, living on almost every continent except Antarctica. They may not be wild, but they've spread farther and become more numerous than their ancestor ever was, and that's all because of their close relationship with humans. So why are there no wild cows? The short answer is because the wild ancestor of cows, the aurochs, went extinct, and the modern cows we see today are entirely domesticated. They've been shaped over thousands of years to serve human needs, which means they don't exist in nature as truly wild animals anymore. At most, we have feral cattle and wild cousins like gaur, banteng, and yaks. It's a fascinating story that blends natural history, human culture, and the unintended consequences of domestication. The next time you see a cow in a field, remember, you're looking at the result of a partnership between humans and animals that stretches back 10,000 years. And while they may not be wild, cows are a living legacy of how we've reshaped the natural world. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.